Okay, good morning and welcome back. I have some questions here. I will try and answer them. Question from Anna University is actually an observation that I sent my question through email to workshop support. Just please check it and answer the same. Yes, I will do that. Unfortunately, I do not have access to email here directly, but I will get to the workshop support. The second question is technical from Amrita Puri. Can all recursive functions be mapped to an iterative operation? Generally, the answer is yes, they can be. Although the resultant implementation may not remain as elegant as you see in a recursive implementation. You may want to use some specialized data structures to implement recursion. Stacks are particularly important in this context. Uh, there was one more question there. Yes, it was from Pune. Ah, can we do our project in C++? Uh, the answer unfortunately is no. I will tell you the reason. The projects that you will do later on till April are supposed to contribute to the contents of this subject portal. And since this subject, as we have all agreed, is around the basic programming, which is universally in this country taught using C or a procedural language and therefore will restrict the projects for this particular thing in C program. As I promised earlier, we shall have a separate workshop on object oriented programming during which time you will be free to do a project in either C++ or Java depending upon whatever we choose. So let us get back to the discussion on as I had mentioned there is a query that image processing or image representation and handling should be discussed in some greater details. So that is what I am going to do today. First I will describe the mechanisms available for representing digital images and then we take a specific image type namely the fingerprint image and see what kind of analysis can be done of that image. First some basics. Image is represented in some standard digital file formats. There are tools and utilities to handle these formats. We will be discussing a particular file representation called XPM representation. This is not a very popular representation for handling large images. It was meant for a different purpose which I shall explain. But it is an extremely simple representation to understand. We will then look at a sample program which uses an image represented in this XPM format and does something useful with it. Tomorrow morning I hope to demonstrate to you how fingerprint images are retrieved from a scanner and how scanner software and application programmer interfaces are used to write a program which connects the scanner to my computer and we can actually capture fingerprint images. Now please understand that a digital image could blow up in size very very quickly. Consider a modern camera which you often designate in terms of number of megapixels that it is able to capture. A 12 megapixel camera that means a, a, a camera which can take a picture containing 12 million pixels can produce an image with the size of 36 million bytes. Why? Because each pixel will typically a color image pixel will have value for red, value for blue, value for green each represented in an 8 bit number consequently each pixel will be represented by 3 bytes and you will end up with a huge image of 36 megabytes. Clearly it is not conducive to handle such large sizes for individual images and some compression becomes necessary. Compression can either be lossy or it can be lossless. There are many formats the two most popular ones is a JPEG format. Almost all photographs that you see stored on digital machines are JPEG photographs. It is a lossy format but it gives very acceptable quality. In fact, reasonably good quality. Bitmap format can be completely lossless although it also provides for compression. As I said, compression need not always be lossy. There are several other formats available. Incidentally, a file containing an image which is in JPEG format will typically have an extension .jpeg or .jpg. 
Similarly, a bitmap format which was started, uh, which, was, which was sort of defined first by Microsoft in a very popular format has an extension .bmp. There are many other formats also. We now describe a peculiar format which is called XPM format. Now most file formats hold binary data because a value let us say 0 to 255 as an intensity value for a black and white image is best represented as a 1 byte number. But these data values are not visible to us because they are not in a printable format, they are in internal binary format. Consequently, they need to be read by a machine, they need to be processed by a machine and all that we can see is a photographic output or a digital output again in terms of internal representation which is converted by some utilities such as Photoshop, photo editors, whatever, whatever or photo displaying tools which can display that image on a digital screen. There was a need felt of what we call editable format, specially to create icons using normal text editing. Icon are short symbols, uh, you know, uh, uh, which are typically used in advertising agency. So in 1989, a group of people in France defined this format. Uh, group Bull Research Center. Bull incidentally was one of the large computer manufacturing company and they had a very, very uh, well established research center that is where these people were working. This format is very peculiar in that it is an ASCII format. So actually you can print the contents of a file as ASCII characters and you can actually see what the contents are because the description is simplistic and still well contained. So let us look at what this format looks like. This format has lines of text describing an image. The first line, incidentally all lines of text together will actually form a component of a C program. So that is how this format is defined. The first line always contains the word XPM enclosed in slash star star slash. You will notice that this is nothing but a comment in C. The second line says static car star, some name, pix map name, like my image, your image or whatever. Notice that this is an array and this is being defined as equal to opening brass followed by string, 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 string. So in fact, this is nothing but a pointer to an array of strings. So the this is effectively then a two-dimensional array. The picture is a two-dimensional array. The first element is a row. So there are a number of rows which will be equal to the number of lines in the image file and number of columns. Each column will correspond to a string here. The first string is value string. The next string is color string. There could be multiple colors used to represent individual pixels. So these are not colors but actually color codes. And then there are many lines corresponding to pixels. So if you have an M by N image, you will have M rows of N pixels each. Each pixel is represented not by a single value, but by one or more ASCII characters. Consequently, the number of characters describing one row of image could have many more characters than the number of pixels that you have. If one pixel is reprinted by two characters, then you will have twice as many number and so on. We will look at an actual image in a short while to understand exactly how this XPM format works. So to recapitulate, the first line of a file containing XPM format image will contain the word XPM for, uh, preceded by slash star and followed by star slash. The next line will be a fixed line which says static car star and this will be a name. Typically, it is not uncommon to give the same name as the file name in which the image is stored. That file name typically has an extension .xpm. And in terms of semantics, this whole structure defines contents of a C program. So all of this can be incorporated in a C program. In fact, that is how programs were written to handle these images. The image itself becomes part of a structure of a C program. 
this has subsequently number of lines first it has a single line called value string we shall see what exactly that value string is then we have one or more lines describing the color codes and then you have as many lines as there are rows in the image let us look at some details first of all what is the value string the value string contains values width height number of colors and characters per pixel and these values these are four values 1 2 3 4 separated by blanks and these values are enclosed in uh, double quotation mark at the beginning and double quotation mark at the end followed by a comma so this is actually a string the next one is called a color string which is array of key and color values and each element of this string is something like key then a color code c and a hexadecimal value of the color again written as a string so there are three items in that string a key code the key will consists of one or more ascii characters chosen by you arbitrarily and these ascii character codes will represent a particular color the color value itself is given by this hexadecimal value how many bytes will be there in key well that will be determined by the value string characters per pixel if you have said that there will be one character per pixel the key will be one byte long or one character long this will have to be a printable character by the way so one character does not give you too many printable characters about 126 127 if you use ascii code it is not uncommon to have two characters representing a pixel because combination of two characters can represent literally thousands of values so this then is the color code character followed by the hexadecimal value of the color if you are using two characters per pixel these two could be absolutely any arbitrary characters of your choice you can say x dot a a b t z q whatever whatever you choose wherever that combination occurs in the actual pixel representation that will that is supposed to mean this particular hexadecimal value of the color so consequently you have as many lines as different color codes you have or effectively as different gray level possibles or color level possible in your image pixels please note that each picture can have its own color code i have utilized this fact to define my own color code here and then there are pixel strings how many pixel strings well if the picture is width number uh, wide and height number rows then this pixel strings will be as many pixel strings per row so if height is h e i g h t then there will be height number of rows and each row will contain width multiplied by the cast per pixel characters essentially then pixel string is also a string and notice how the string is written it starts with a double quote then it has these series of characters these will represent by the way the actual color code corresponding to a pixel so for example if x dot x and dot is used to represent let us say uh, certain value of red certain value of blue certain value of green then wherever x dot occurs it will mean that that pixel is of the same color and this combination will depend upon the kind of color coding that you have used and the kind of actual values that exist in the digitized image originally captured but suffice it to say that even each pixel string is written actually as a string it has a double apostrophe at the beginning it has a double apostrophe at the end and a comma so these are comma separated strings that you will find in the xpm file here is a sample image this is called a dot image by the way incidentally the image is restricted to this area so this is actually the image it in fact looks like a dot if the aspect ratio is correct but look at how and in fact if you interpret this and show it on a screen you will actually see a small dot here so let us see what this file contains the first line is an xpm comment the second line is static char star dot dot is the name of the file this is an array this is followed by a value string which reads 5521 if you recall what the various uh, uh, data items were in this line the first one is width the second one is height so it's a 5 by 5 image that means this has five rows of pixels and in each row there are five pixels in short 
it is a very small image of 5 pixel by 5 pixel or 25 pixels and that is why you will see when you represent this as a digital image you will see a dot. Notice the color coding scheme that they have used it says two characters are used to represent each color uh, sorry uh, 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 there are two colors in the whole scheme and one character is used to represent colors. That means the pixels here are capable of showing only two colors they need not be black and white by the way. For example one color can be red one can be blue one can be black another can be magenta whatever be your choice that is the reason why a two color image can be represented by this and can be correctly interpreted. So once again it says this is a 5 pixel by 5 pixel image it has two colors and each color is represented by one character. This is now followed by the color code key strings. So let us see what these strings are this is the first one this string has a dot so that means dot is the symbol used to reprint a color what is that color the color is given as an hexadecimal code 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. so that means this color is all all zeros and what is all zeros all zeros is black so the dot represents a black here you have an x what does x represent this code says x is a color with a value hexadecimal FF0000. Typically these are sort of hexadecimal numbers so that means this is one byte the second byte this third byte and traditionally the first byte is supposed to represent the intensity of red second byte of uh, green and third byte of blue. Since green and blue components are zero this color is actually red consequently you have a black and red image the black is represented by a dot and the red is represented by x this is followed by five rows of five pixels each notice what these pixels contain dot dot x dot dot that means the first pixel color is uh, 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 black second pixel color is black third pixel color is red fourth is black fifth is black this one has first as black next three red one black this one has all five red this one has one black three reds one black and this one has two blacks one red two blacks it's a very simplistic image it's an icon of a dot but you can see that this simple coding scheme can be extended to represent the most complex image that you can come across so for example instead of a 5 by 5 image you may have a 500 by 500 image or 300 by 400 image instead of two colors you may have 1000 colors depends upon what kind of different colors you want to represent and instead of using one character to represent a color a particular color value you can have two characters represent a color value. You generally do not need three characters two ASCII characters in combination give you adequately large number of colors uh, to be represented. Suppose we had grayscale images I had mentioned last time that grayscale image is nothing but a black and white image. Incidentally fingerprint images are all grayscale images. So each pixel is a shade of black to white. It is not pure black and white. A black and white is called a monochrome or monotone image. So monotonous that means either black or white. Every pixel has only two colors. But a grayscale image has shades of gray, shades of white, shades of black whatever. And grayscales can be represented as a one byte pixel value internal. So the numerical value associated with a pixel can be between 0 to 255 it adequately represents a grayscale image. But if we want to represent a grayscale image using an XPM format then what you can do is that first you can represent a gray shade by choosing color keys or color codes which are identical red green and blue pixel components. Please remember that 0 red, 0 green, 0 blue will mean black. FF red, FF green and FF blue will mean white. And an equal combination in any other value will mean a different shade of gray. For example, hex 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is black, hex FF, FF, FF is white and hex 8, 0, 8, 0, 8, 0 is an intermediate shade between black and white. So all shades of gray can be represented in this mechanism by using actual colors of course 
you have to say this is the color value that you would like to have a pixel uh, a pixel to have you have to give a code in terms of one or more ascii characters clearly one ascii character will not be sufficient so you will use two ascii characters to represent a color and once you have decided what is going to be your color coding scheme you can then based on the actual values of the pixel of the gray scale image you can convert that pixel value in the appropriate key combination of two characters and then write those many characters in your file resulting into an xpm file representation of a gray scale image here is a sample fingerprint xpm file so this has slash star xpm star slash static char star lt0% 2 this is an arbitrary file name that i have given this means left thumb zero at trial that is the first time you capture person 2 means person number 2 this is this would roughly be the file name that you will use although it is not mandatory now the string itself says width height n colors cars per pixel this is included as a comment and what are the values 352 544 256 and 2 what does it mean to recall from our previous explanation 352 is the width 544 is the height that means this particular picture has 544 rows and each row has 352 pixels we are saying that totally there will be 256 colors obviously it's a gray scale so 0 to 255 will be the colors and each color will be 0 0 1 0 1 to 0 2 0 2 remember what i said red green and blue in exactly equal measure will constitute a gray shade and finally this value string says that each of these 256 colors will be represented by two ascii characters which two characters xpm format does not say that you have to use these specific characters to represent this color it says use absolutely any combination of two characters that you want however please define in the same file what that particular code means for example i have chosen to use capital a and small a to represent full black so this is where Uh, a a is defined as color 00 capital a small b is defined as color 010101 capital a and small c is defined as this color and since this is going to successful successively go over from 0 to 255 255 remember in hexadecimal will be ff 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 so the scheme that i have chosen is extremely simplistic although i will write these details in an xpm file but by looking at the code i can very quickly determine what the color is why what i am doing is i am keeping capital a constant for the first set of letters and varying a b c d e f g h etc not 26 times not up to z but say 25 characters an arbitrary choice after finishing the first 25 characters of this small alphabet i change the first character on the left hand side from a to b and next 25 are represented as b a b b b c b d etc the subsequent next 25 are represented c a c b etc etc and i continue this till i have represented all 255 elements observe that this simple coding scheme permits me to quickly calculate the gray value of a pixel given its code we shall see in the program how exactly these calculations are done very simply here is a fingerprint image of a person you might see it as slightly blurred image and that happens because the image is a gray scale image so it is neither white nor black you will notice that the background is all white there are in between blackish lines but not fully black lines now what you would like to do is you would like to sort of stretch it first and digitize it to a black and white image so if you do what we call a histogram equalization and convert this image into a pure binary image zero or one you may get a picture of this type you will uh, oh sorry this, this is another picture so this is these are fingerprints of two different persons i have used this illustration to tell you a well known fact that fingerprints are unique you as you can see here although both are fingerprints this fingerprint has a pattern which is significantly different from the pattern that you see on this fingerprint and anybody by visual inspection can say look this fingerprint belongs to somebody else this fingerprint belongs to somebody else 
even if you have fingerprint of the same person taken at different times here is a set of images captured at different times both these fingerprints belong to the same person by the way an expert can see very clearly that they are similar however it is interesting to note from a digital image point of view that there is a slight tilt in one image with respect to another one there is a slight shift also consequently these particular patterns that you see here somewhere around this axis you will see that these patterns here are somewhere around this axis that means this particular finger when it was kept on the scanner was kept at a slight angle and not the entire surface was covered exactly in the same way as this surface was covered this in fact is the greatest problem in handling digital images ordinarily when we compare two entities we are used to comparing exact values is value of m equal to n if it is we say they are same otherwise they are not same in this we will be tempted to say that if we have let's say 500 by 300 image then each pixel point we can compare with the corresponding pixel point and if all pixel points agree in value we say the image is same very unfortunately image analysis completely prohibits this kind of simplistic comparison because a very small change in the image could cause huge differences in comparison this small change of about 5 degrees change in the orientation of these two fingers will ensure that a point to point comparison of pixels will never be able to establish equality consequently we have to look for patterns on the finger and these are the patterns that we are talking about these patterns incidentally are called minutia say so minutia are patterns which are characterized or identified because what you see here as these lines these are called ridge lines and valleys there are uh, uh, sort of technical terminology which will not go into the details suffice it to say from a computer programming perspective that even if we represent these two images as a two dimensional array of pixels of gray scales a pixel by pixel comparison is completely ruled out for any kind of uh, uh, establishing the fact whether these two fingerprints are the same person or different person but that is a later issue first we consider whether the quality of the image that you get by this process is adequate in a gray scale the answer is no because there is very little clarity we would like to therefore enhance this image you will remember we had talked about contrast enhancement by equalizing the histogram the best technique for a gray scale image uh, which is actually a fingerprint kind of pattern and not really a scenery or something is to convert 0 to 255 values into 0 and 1 value when you do that the processing of gray scale image will convert this into a bitonal image now how do you convert it into a bitonal image very simple you have values ranging from 0 to 255 you can arbitrarily decide that any pixel value which is less than 128 it is black otherwise it is white or you may use a better threshold such that the average pixel value in the image is used that as threshold this exercise is very simple to do you take an image read the xpm file use decoding the codes that have been used and convert the pixel image into internal values internal binary values each value put, uh, being put into one byte and there are as many bytes as there are height multiplied by width number of pixels now having this digital representation you can simply look at each pixel if the pixel value is greater than certain threshold you may announce it to be uh, white if it is less than certain, uh, certain threshold you may announce it to be black visibly the quality of the image improves significantly as can be seen by a few slides here so here again is image of a fingerprint of a person incidentally i have used dot bmp file in my slides you can take these out convert them into jpeg you can convert them into xpm file however most modern tools like photoshop photo editors or photo display tools etc are not capable of displaying xpm file directly but almost all these tools come with a conversion so you can say convert this into bmp this into jpeg jpeg into this or whatever happened. 
that's what I have used to display it for your benefit. Digitally, of course, it is a set of values organized as a two dimensional matrix whose dimensions are defined by width and height of the particular image. So, if this is the image of uh, the fingerprint of a person, then by converting a grayscale image into a monotone image or a bitonal image, 0, 1 image, you will get something of this sort. Well, instead of the picture becoming clearer, we seem to have lost clarity. This picture appears to be better. Why this has happened? This has happened because we have arbitrarily chosen to generate this image by using a threshold which is 128. The threshold cannot be arbitrarily set. The threshold has to be set in the context of the actual pixel values that you observe in an image. And as I mentioned earlier, using the average is a much better mechanism of getting a sharper image. If we do that, the monotone image with threshold equal to 120 becomes like this. The right hand side image is a thresholded monotone. Two things are noticeable. Every pixel in this image is either pure white or pure black. Consequently, the ridges and the valleys which we could briefly identify here are very prominently visible here. This is regarded as a much better digital image to handle in the context of fingerprint analysis. Is the threshold 180 correct? Well, we do not know. It depends upon the average pixel value here. So, what I have done is I have written a program to calculate the average pixel value here and use that as a threshold consequently getting this image. You will all agree that this image is still much sharper. All that we are going to see today is to write a C program to get a uh, fingerprint image in XPM format, read that image, calculate the histogram, find out the average value and using that average value as a threshold, create another XPM file which is actually a binary file which is 0, 1, 5. And as demonstrated here, let us look at these three successive figures one after another. This first one uses 128 as an arbitrary threshold. This is the second one and this is the third one which actually uses the average pixel value. Is this the complete the thing about fingerprint analysis? By no means. This is just the beginning. Please notice that the fingerprint that you now see while the minutiae and other things and the ridges etc. may be slightly more prominently observable, we are not going to use human beings to analyze these images. The pattern recognition etc. whatever, we hope to do it automatically using digital computers. Consequently, there are subsequent steps that are required to analyze this image automatically further. For the purposes of this workshop, we are going to limit ourselves to construction of a C program which does the limited task that I mentioned. Namely, read a grayscale fingerprint image, uh, convert it into internal digital values of whatever m by n pixels depending upon width and height, then calculate the histogram, for find out the average and use thresholding to get a sharper image. The subsequent steps by the way would be to isolate these ridges very clearly. You can see that these are thick ridges. The black is very thick here. What it means is there are several ones in adjacent rows and columns. That is why you have this thick line. The patterns which we, which we wish to locate on a fingerprint, which we would later on wish to compare with other fingerprints, these patterns called minutia, arches, whatever, whatever. There are n number and there is a huge amount of literature. In fact, you can again go to Wikipedia and look at digital fingerprint analysis. You will get many more interesting details out of it. That would require image thinning, for example. So, you replace all neighboring ones which appear in a bunch by one line of consecutive bunch. So, you are thinning that thing. Once you have thin lines, you can actually use directional pattern extraction or you can do uh, identification of minutia and their coordinates and so on. It is an extremely complex, very rich uh, research area. We will leave that for those who are interested to read it up either through image processing books or through even popular sites like Wikipedia. Here is another captured image. Again, you can see this is a grayscale image and this is its monotone version. 
I hope you will agree that the clarity is far superior when you convert it in this fashion. So now we will quickly go through a program which converts a grayscale image to monotone. First, let us recapitulate the algorithm that we are going to use. We know the XPM format. So we will use that XPM format knowledge to read a, the data from an image file containing a fingerprint data into our computer's memory. We will declare an image appropriately as an array which has the total number of pixels equal to width and height. The width and height information we are going to collect out of the same file anyway. Here are some comments which indicate that first I wrote this program for my CS101 course. This was written in C++ by the way. I have rewritten it in C for the IST workshop. Please note the last line, copyright under Creative Commons. The Creative Commons license which we use says that this program can be distributed happily, can be dissected, can be modified as long as the copyright is retained in your program. I have included stdio.h and string.h as two header files which are required to handle this program. Here is a host of variables and arrays that I have defined. I will describe a few important uh, variables and structures and arrays. Unsigned car star image. So I am defining a pointer which I am incidentally calling image but this pointer points to a character kind of entity. Now it is very obvious that the word image will mean that it will be storing one of the two images either the grayscale image or the input image. And clearly the image will mean a large number of bytes. What am I doing here? I am merely declaring a character type pointer which is called image. I have another pointer which is referring to mono image. So obviously I imply that this image will somehow be equal to the full fledged grayscale image and the second one will be containing the monotone image that I will generate out of my logic. But wait, the image is supposed to be a large array, preferably a two-dimensional array. Here I am declaring only two pointers. This is where you will recall our discussion on dynamic memory allocation. Please note that individual pictures, digital pictures, even in XPM format, that I would like to analyze using this kind of program could have greatly varying heights and width. I do not therefore wish to define a fixed size array to hold my images. What if tomorrow I get an image which is slightly larger? Or what if I consistently get images which are just one tenth the size that I allocate and most of the memory goes free? That is why I will use dynamic memory allocation to associate memory with each one of these image and mono image respectively. Then I have unsigned n, n width, n height, n colors num care per symbol. Notice that these are nothing but the values that you will appear in the second line of your XPM file. Then I have defined simple variables such as ch, ch1, ch2. Unsigned int is defined as a val. Unsigned int will mean that the value can be between 0 to 255. And I specifically define a variable called v0 to mean 0 value and v255 to mean 255 value. Why do I do that? Because I know ultimately in my monochrome image the only values which should be visible are 0 and 255. Of course, because my final file is going to be in XPM format, the values will not be visible as 0 and 255, but they will be visible as some color code that we shall decide. I have sum of columns, average, sum of rows, etc., etc. Obviously, I use them to calculate the statistical pattern of the image values in pixels. I have long int hist which stands for histogram as we have seen earlier it has 256 elements. And then we have pause to represent position, average, sum, whatever, whatever you have. These are various indices. Care file line string 2000. I am defining a very large array of characters to represent a string 
which will come out of a single line in the file. That is why arbitrarily I have named this array to be five line strength. I do expect a line to be very large. Note that this is not a simple text line that you usually see in your books or screens which is less than 80 bytes long. This is actually a string which will hold the complete set of pixels for one row of that image. And if a pixel is represented by two characters, then I will have twice as many entries into this array. Consequently, this size has been arbitrarily defined as 2000 elements. Then I have variables or arrays, again character arrays, which will define a file name. The file name S simply means that the file name string is what is represented by a 20 character array. Then I have a mono file name, which I have simply defined as M minus. So, what I, why I am doing that? I am actually going to construct the file name of my final file using mono file name and whatever file name user has given. So, effectively, if I call the original file as person1.xpm, uh, where person1 is the name of the file, then what I will produce using this program will be called m-person1.xpm. This m standing for monotone. This is an interesting technique and often resorted to, namely that the file name itself is considered to be a very meaningful information. And once you have a new file generated out of an existing file in a different format, you tend to retain the name of that file as is was and either add a prefix or a suffix to that. In this particular case, I am adding a well-known prefix m dash. Well-known meaning, well, easily understood and easily remembered uh, prefix. So, all the monotone files will be m dash something at the end of my program. Here are some more comments. First, files are assumed to be in dot .xpm format for grayscale image. The color palette is chosen arbitrary. Why I have chosen arbitrarily the color palette? Because if I have certain logic in my color palette, then I do not even have to read the entire color palette. I know by that logic that what two characters will represent what color. For example, I have given here in comments that my color palette is defined as having, keeping capital A in the first position, A, 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 B, A, C, etc. up to A, Y, then B, A, B, 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 C, etc. First character changes after every 25 symbols. Second character, A, B, C, D, F, G, H up to Y, then again it is repeated and so on. You will soon see the reason for doing this simplistic codification because given any two characters, when we read those two characters for a particular pixel in the image, you can calculate the corresponding numerical value without ever referring to the color code. Ordinarily, you will have to store all the color codes of an XPM file into an internal array. And whenever you get a pixel value represented by some two characters, you have to compare these two characters with the entire color code array. Here, because of the simplistic choice, I can actually do a numeric mapping very easily. Second. For the output file, I decide that for I have a monotone image, I have only two colors, so I will represent white by dot and black by x, something that we saw uh, very briefly in the representation of a dot image uh, that we saw. So, generating and represent, representing a monotone image is far simpler. I have only two colors, uh, each coded by x and 0, and obviously one of them will be all zeros and the others will be all Fs. Let us very quickly go through the logic. First, we get a file name for input fingerprint image. We assume dot .xpm extension. So, I print a message, give a file name and I collect that file name. Now, I have five star image in file 1 and star image out file 1. I am going to need two files in my program. One file is an input file which will be connected to the input image that I get in grayscale. The other file which will be connected to any physical external file which will be called image out file. This is going to be my monotonous image. What do I do here? Given a file name, I open that file. We have seen that yesterday in the file operations that when I give this as the string name string, then a file with that name should exist in the directory in which you are executing this program. R means I am opening it up for reading. Observe the syntax. 
I say image file 1 is equal to f open this, this, this. If the file actually exists, which means I have not made a mistake in typing the name or something, then that file will be available for further reading and so on. However, if the image in file 1 is not equal to null, then and only then I proceed further. Why this null? Well, a null pointer is indicates some sort of problem in the operations. In this particular case, if a file pointer ever becomes null, that means it is unable to find the file, locate the file or hold the file or whatever. In such situation, I say uh, the, the image file is found and open. Now I have to read the image file. What am I reading? I am actually reading in XPM format, which means the first three lines are, well, just comments except one which contains the value, the most important information, width of image, height of image, uh, the number of colors that the image has, in this case they will be of course uh, 256 and the number of characters that I use to represent each color. In this case, I should actually be reading this data from the image file, but I have myself created that file in the first place and therefore I know which two characters will represent which color in my image. When I say color, I mean the grayscale shade. So here is what I do. If image in file has opened properly, then I give a message that I have found and opened the uh, uh, file. Then I skip the first three lines. Why? First three lines contain first a comment with X, XPM written inside. Second, where some problem, whatever, whatever uh, the, the information that you had. And the third one, Okay, is again another comment. So I just keep these lines. I get uh, image from image file one. I get a string. Notice that I am using f get s. F get s will get me a string from the designated file pointer which is written at the last column. How many characters should it read? Ordinarily, this f get s will read as many characters as appear before the end of line symbol because this is still regarded as a text file. However, if there is no end of line or new line character and you really have a large record, this fgets will read as many as 1999 bytes at most and it will automatically insert a backslash zero in the uh, remaining string. However, this is simpler than what it appears to be. So in this way, we have actually got a name for a file which stores the XPM photographs. Next line is height, width, number of pixels, etc. So I again get a string. I can read these four values directly by the way from that line because we know how to read three, four, five values from input. The trouble is that ordinarily when I ask for three values, you will be giving me three values separated by black. But here the situation is, 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 is slightly different. It's slightly different in the sense that I am using an f get s thing to get the string from an image file and from that string I will interpret the value of height, width and number of pixels. So what am I doing? This string does not contain just four numerical values. Let us go back a bit and just examine what this string would contain. Look at this string. This string has double apostrophe, one value blank, another value blank, third value blank, fourth value and a double apostrophe. Now if such a line is fed as an input line from my keyboard, my scanf function etc. will be unable to extract very very important information such as this has 352 columns, 544 rows, each pixel has 256 values and each pixel is represented by two characters. I may miss giving you this information. And therefore, instead of reading this string directly from a file, I read this entire thing into a separate string. Then I personally take care of removing this opening uh, uh, double quote and possibly the last double quote. And then whatever pure values remain, I will read them as if I am reading them from file. Please remember we explained it yesterday, I think. Get s will get you a string from standard input std in. Uh, f get s will get you a string from a file which has been named and opened. And in this particular case, by getting the string, 
separating out this double coat appears to be a far easy mechanism of processing this file. So let us quickly go over to the program which we left halfway through. So this is of course the coding scheme and so on and this is the program. I have skipped the first three lines here. Now I read height, width and number of pixels from the next line. So I get a character string first. Now I scan the character string from 0th position. This line obviously is bound to have two double apostrophes. One as the starting point, one at the end point. I have a very simple job. Go through every character of this string. The moment you find a character which is double apostrophe, stop there. After that are going to be your values, width, height, num color and num cap. This is exactly the logic that has been implemented here. All that I do is I start with i equal to 0 and while i is not equal to apostrophe, I am now looking for the second apostrophe. I will keep transferring characters one by one from whatever I have read into the department of CSC characters. So I have two position counters L pass and S pass okay? and I use these L pass and S pass to pass over the indices which are relevant here to capture the value. So I say while line I not equal to double apostrophe simply keep incrementing I. I will find someone okay, where, where some character which suddenly is this apostrophe. The moment I have dictated, detected this double apostrophe, double quote, I know that my actual values will start flowing in from it. So I start assembling string byte by byte from the first occurrence of this double quote mark to the last occurrence preferably and store that somewhere else. So what am I doing? In the second array, I transfer characters from line to S. Line is what I have got, S is what I wish to create. Once I complete this, my, my job is actually over. I will transfer these characters S pos equal to 0, line of S pos equal to double quote, S pos plus plus L plus plus L pos plus plus. You can verify that this code works correctly without any problem. And finally, when all characters are pushed into S, now S may have 15 characters, 20 characters, 30 characters, but it will not be regarded as a string unless it is terminated by a backslash 0. So after reading as many characters about uh, uh, the uh, from the string that you want till you get this double quote, from this point onwards you start pushing L posset character into S posset character, character and you keep updating these numbers till such time that you get the second double quote which is at the end of the file. At which point you set backslash 0 as the contents of that particular place. Consequently, you have a proper string even in your S. Notice the use of S scanf. As I mentioned to you earlier, scanf is a, family, a function of a family which reads data from your keyboard. If I say f scanf, I will be reading data from a named file for which I will have to provide a file pointer. When I say S scanf, I am doing neither. S scanf will read data from a string. And that string itself is designated as part of the SCANF instruction that you will see here. What it has is width, height, uh, number of colors and numcar. JPG and JPEG are same or not is a question from SJSITS. Yes, uh, they are same. Uh, there is no difference. It is just a different file extension that you use. Okay, thank you. We will meet after the break.